Hello, my name is Don and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Ruger 1022, the aftermarket barrels that are available for it, how accurate they are, how well they fit, and we're going to show you the inside of the board too, so stay tuned. So it really is quite amazing what this little rifle has done for the firearms industry. Now there are products for this thing from triggers to stocks to barrels and everything in between. They make everything for this rifle. If you don't like it, you can replace it and you can turn these little rifles into absolute tack drivers. So it never ceases to amaze me how many different configurations you can put these 1022s in. You can go anything from a full precision build to a Nice little steel challenge ripper like this Faxum build right here. Now we're going to talk a little bit about, more about this build in the future, um, putting it through its paces as we speak. So we'll be doing a full review on this uh, rifle probably in a few weeks. So it's no secret that pretty much every company that builds aftermarket barrels probably makes one for a 1022. Now some are not all created equal. Now you have your cheaper lower end ones like Shaw and uh, Green Mountain. Uh, now granted, I'm just saying it's lower end because of the price and they don't do some of the things that the other manufacturers do that set their barrels apart, but they're still really good shooters. So what I'm going to show you today is basically the guts of the barrel. So the rifling, the inside, the chamber, and the crown. Uh, we're going to run a boroscope and we're using a test long uh, boroscope I just bought on Amazon. I hook it up to my tablet through the USB. It does a phenomenal job. I'll leave a link down below for, for the uh, unit that I'm using. Uh, but So we're going to go over basically the inside of the barrel and we're going to start off with the uh, kid. We're going to go to the shillin and then we're going to go to the green mountain. And then we'll have some final thoughts at the end. So stay tuned. Okay, so now this is the shillin barrel and we're going to start at the uh, chamber end. Now this has ratchet rifling. You can see where there's one distinct uh, sharp edge on the land there, and then the other one fades into the groove. Now that's supposed to buck side to side wind at longer ranges. Does it? I don't know, but uh, that's what it's supposed to do. And that's why uh, this barrel, I believe, is more money than the other two. Plus it is precision lapped, so there are uh, some distinct advantages to um, the shillin barrel. Uh, now the shillin barrel is not ammo picky. Uh, it has a bent chamber in it. Now it doesn't when you when you're seeing these picks. Now that like that rifling does not look like it's very defined, but that's that's kind of the nature of ratchet rifling. But uh, this has a bent chamber and it, it's not fussy at all. It shoots really well. Uh, shoots all ammunition very well. I have not found anything that um, would not feed. Uh, it's just a very good quality barrel and I think that's where the price comes in. Now this one runs about $390. Uh, quite a bit more than the uh, the other two. But you know most times in, in you know you're, you're paying for La a lapped bore, you're paying for the ratchet rifling. Uh, now this, this particular uh, barrel is not even threaded, so you know that's that money without the threaded option. So uh, I don't even know if you can get a threaded option on this uh, particular barrel. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's the shillin and you see just how nice the inside of that barrel looks. This is the kid barrel. Now, Kid gets their, their barrels from Lothar Walther in Germany, and then they put the finishing touches on them. Uh, so you know, they're a, you know they're a good quality barrel, very good stainless steel. But let's start at the, uh, the chamber end again. Good, no carbon ring. Uh, and just look at how nice the rifling is on this, this barrel. I mean, this barrel is absolutely perfect. And that's what you get with the kid. You know, this has button rifling, and then they hand lap these, according to the website. Now, this is a fluted option. So this one, this barrel is a little bit more money 
Okay, so this barrel threaded with the thread protector on it is $347. So it's cheaper than the shilling and it is a threaded option. Now, if you're gonna put a, a tuner on one of these, then you know I guess that would be the only reason, well, that or a muzzle brake. I don't know why you'd want one of them, but um, you know, if you're gonna put a tuner on this, then I guess you could go with the uh, threaded option, but a good 11 degree crown, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, matter of fact, I, that's what I prefer. I don't use a tuner myself. But you just see how perfect that barrel is all the way up and down. Okay, so now this is the Green Mountain barrel, and straight away you can see this chamber actually looks a little bit better. It doesn't have as many grooves and uh, cutting marks, uh, machining marks, as the other two did. Uh, then you oh, got a little bit of a carbon ring going on there. All right, so let's get into the... Now this is another button rifle. Now this is a stainless steel barrel. Now straight away you can see that this is not nice and shiny like the other two. And this is the difference in a lead lap bore. Now you can also see that the rifling is not as defined in this barrel. There are chatter marks from when the rifling was put in this barrel. And when they don't lap these bores, those chatter marks will actually gather lead. As you can see right there, you can see where there's lead getting caught in those little chatter marks. Now this is what you're paying for with those other barrels, guys. Um, lapping takes time and is not cheap. So if you're paying an extra 100 bucks, that's probably at least what a gunsmith would charge to lap a barrel. And I tell you, lapping a barrel, I, I couldn't imagine how much more accurate these would be if they did lap them. Uh, I have had some barrels in the past that they look like cheese graters when you uh, put a boroscope down it. And then I had one that would, man, you couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with it. It was horrible. And I took it down to my gunsmith buddy and he cleaned it up. Uh, he lead lapped it. And I tell you what, that thing was a very good shooting barrel after he got done with it. So if you do have the option ever to buy buying a barrel that's been lapped and one that hasn't, I would always go with the lapped barrel. So you can see the chatter marks in, in this barrel. And most when you lap these barrels, most of the time you can get those chatter marks out of a barrel for the most part. But you know, this barrel is not as nice and shiny as the other ones, but you know, it is roughly a hundred dollars less than the other ones. So you get what you pay for. These chatter marks aren't that bad and, and they probably could come out if you did lap the bore probably get most of that out of there this is this is not that dirty of a barrel either and that's just because actually I just cleaned this barrel not too long ago I didn't do a deep deep clean but this is a fairly clean barrel and honestly when I look at the chatter marks there when I got this barrel I uh, it looked just like this I always scope my barrels when I first get them but look how the the rifling on this barrel is not as defined as the kid and, and it's got a similar style rifling so that's the green mountain barrel all right guys well i hope you can see now that the graduation in price does come with graduation and features so you start off with that green mountain barrel the inside is got some imperfections in it there's some chatter marks but it really doesn't affect how the barrel shoots and then you get into the kid and the kid is quite a bit more refined it's nice and shiny on the inside there are no imperfections and there's nothing for lead to build up on so they clean up easier same thing with the shillin now the shillin you're getting the uh the lapped bore, you're also getting the ratchet rifling, which is supposed to buck side to side wind downrange. Uh, but you are getting more for your money as the price increases. I guess you just gotta decide if it's worth it for you. All right guys, well that's pretty much all I got for you today. So if you like what you saw, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you find value in my content, go down there and smash that subscribe button. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up. We've got a few reviews on some different products I was approached about that I pretty excited about. So if you could go down there, smash that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one.